This video covers how to set up HVAC systems in Sapphira's web applications, both Sapphira Architecture and Sapphira Systems. Let's begin with Sapphira Architecture. Users of Sapphira Architecture have fairly limited control over the HVAC systems. They can simply select from a dropdown of three standard system types. But there is still an HVAC system being simulated on an hour-by-hour -hour basis over the course of the entire year, so the modifications that you make to the envelope or to space use settings will change the HVAC results that you're seeing. For example, if I were to create a clone and look at a different type of HVAC system, let's run this analysis, and let's change some of these outputs uh, to look at some of the uh, HVAC system types of outputs. So for instance, we're looking at the heating and cooling design capacities, we're looking at the airflow of the air handling unit, um, and many of these types of outputs that the architecture unit can see uh, are affected by space use, envelope, um, and zoning sorts of settings. So you can see here, uh, just using these two different types of systems, we have fairly significant differences between the uh, system sizing and uh, very significant differences between the design airflow. The architecture user can also see uh, peak loads, both cooling and heating loads in the building, and will be able to see the impact of changes like adding shading, for instance, to those peak loads. And that can be very important because certain uh, types of envelope decisions, such as shading, may not have a huge impact on the overall energy use of the building, but might, might have a big impact on the peak loads, uh, which in turn can affect the system sizing and the cost of the HVAC system. Now let's take a look at Sapphira Systems. Here's the same project in Sapphira Systems. The systems user has a much larger list of HVAC system types to choose from, and they're also able to configure those systems in the air side and water side tabs in the input section below. Changing the system type will change the sorts of inputs that are visible in the tabs below, and will also change the typical ranges for those slider values for those systems. However, you can it is possible to set values outside of the slider ranges. For example, I could come into the water side tab, and if I look at the slider for the chiller COP, it goes up to 10. However, I could type in 20 as a value there and have it be used in the simulation. You will see that I may get a note that says it's outside of typical ranges and may be unrealistic, but if I go ahead and set it as that anyway, uh, that value will be used in the simulation. One other thing you should be aware of is that additional input options that aren't immediately visible are available if you click Advanced Settings, or if you click some of the icons uh, in this interface, you're able to uh, adjust other aspects of the systems that you may not see at first. The changes that we make here will, of course, reflect on the results that we see on the right-hand side, including the energy use results, the comfort metrics, and the HVAC sizing, which is what you see as the output here. So as we make adjustments to the design, we can see the implications of those adjustments uh, very quickly. If you're looking for more information on HVAC design in Sapphira, Take a look at the HVAC section of the knowledge base, which you can get to through uh, the top menu here, or by hovering over the question mark in the HVAC system type. There's a number of links here that will take you to more information. 